So why does Windows get slower over a period of time? The first thing I want to say is it doesn't seem to affect Macs or Linux in the same way. It's been the way that Microsoft have designed their software. There is several things that you may not be aware of that happens. When, when you install some software, what happens is it will introduce new stuff to your start menu. You, you'll see it when you boot up and then down in the corner, every time you boot your Windows, it's, in, it's running everything, be it QuickBooks, be it Dropbox, be it, be it any bit of software um, it's decided to add to the start menu. What's, what's happened is it, you start off with this amount of processes, uh, and as you install software, it keeps adding, like Adobe Updater and all these bits. So you end up with, say, 20 at the start and by the time it's finished there's about 100 things running in the background and all booting up on the startup but also if you delete something and it's not removed from the startup because sometimes you get bad badly written software it doesn't remove it back out you will still get it going to look for that bit of software so for example it goes to because a startup is basically a sequence. It's basically going down, loading them one after the other. So it knows it's got to find this bit of software. It's in its list. It's got its startup list. So it goes and looks for it, and it goes, it's not here. And then it goes back after a timeout period, and then it'll go to the next bit of software. So as you can see, if you've got several bits of software that aren't there anymore, that you've deleted or whatever, they're still sat in there. It still thinks they're on your hard drive somewhere. So it will go and look for it every startup. The next thing is the registry. The registry is not just a set of keys. You know, the registry actually stores where all these um, files and things go. So it, it attaches, the keys are attached to bits of software, etc. So as time goes on, your registry grows and grows and grows because like the startup menu often things don't remove themselves so you may have um, for example decided I don't like this bit of software like say Firefox you decide to swap from Firefox back to Windows Explorer for your internet browser it will still keep junk in the registry key and uh, in, in the registry and it will still look for that software even though the software is not there and then there's a timeout period so as you can imagine over a period of time this gets slower and slower the more clogged up it gets and a lot of this stuff you don't see because it's all in the background it's all stuff going on outside of your box because you'll just go click install off you go then after you've done that for six months with different bits and pieces you start thinking the computer's getting slow but it's these bits in the start menu, bits in the registry. Then you've got the things like defragmentation of the hard drive, where f the files are stored all over the drive instead of one location. So you've got bits of files, so it's going looking for them. Um, that's where you defragment your hard drive regularly. You can set that up to be automated as well. So those three things are very common critical ones that will have an effect on your system. But then if you're downloading torrents, for example, maybe you've got movies you're downloading or heaven forbid, or whatever it is, and then you get files that sit there like at 98% or something, they're still taking up hard drive space. Even if they're not actually doing anything, they're still holding space on your hard drive. Because when you create a torrent, it takes that chunk of data and it's filling in the gap. So it's taking the space on your hard drive. Those things slow, slow your system down, as does having your hard drive too full because it, the computer likes to have a bit of space to move things around and function. Now, Windows also has this really bad habit of putting stuff out before it's complete, as you know very well. Um, this is why you get your service packs one after the other, um, normally within a few months of each other. When XP come out, it would run on a 64 megabyte machine. You know, 64 meg of memory would run XP, the original XP. But then you get security updates, you get software changes, etc. And by the time it gets to Service Pack 3, it's already using 512k of memory um, because of all these extra processes it's running. That slows it down. That's why when you see... Windows 
going through this, you see it's taking up more and more hard drive space. I, I've got a friend that, from France that comes out to the Philippines. His PC doesn't run properly because it's 99% taken up by, by Windows. It's an old laptop, um, but it's, the amount of stuff on there from XP actually stops him actually being able to use most of the functionality of his laptop now because uh, it's got quite a small hard drive. So those things will affect your system severely. Uh, they will cause you your boot up to go from 15 seconds to 30 or even longer sometimes. Um, and then you've got the other bits like overloaded software for virus killing. Um, there's certain big branded names I will not have on my system. They just bloat it. They, they may be very secure, but I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes waiting for it to scan everything I put into my PC. It's excessive. When it gets to the point where it's not doing what you want it to do, it's, I mean, the Windows does that with its updates and takes control of your PC sometimes. Say, well, I'm off going to do this. And you're like, hang on a minute, it's my PC. I'll decide if you're going to do something. But you get to this point where big companies like to be more in control um, and you end up with this bloatware um, well bloatware is a, a bit unfair to say it's not bloatware it's just excessive protection for a home PC um, it's cheap virus uh, virus protection it's cheap malware protection but Avast or AVG will do it and it's a lot lighter um, going for these big ones like I mean Norton I cannot have on my PC um, it just it just messes around with too much stuff it, even when you shut some of these things down it switches themselves back on and said well hang on a minute I'm still in control of your PC that's not how these things should run um, I don't know where that would actually be a normal environment where people would find that acceptable you know you it slows your PC down and then it decides when it wants to be on and off but anyway all these things will slow your PC down. Now, if you do things like CCleaner, um, which is available online, it will clear things like your registry. You, you can sort your uh, startup menu and things out. Um, another thing is your temporary folders. If you have zipped folders, for example, when they've been unzipped, there'll often be um, these temporary folders created where it creates a temporary files. And often Windows doesn't delete much. Um, this is where it, it all falls down. It doesn't clean up the registry. It doesn't clean up your temporary files. It doesn't do much unless you tell it to. And this is why the CCleaner is pretty good. Um, and the virus killing, keep it light, keep it simple. Okay, I know everyone's paranoid about getting a virus on the PC. I always look at it this way, I could format this PC and it'd be back up and running in an hour. Um, I, I've got nothing on here I really worry about with a virus. This is the big scare on the internet and generally in the media. There is, unless it's actually going to be deprimental, um, you don't need to be excessive. And it, I mean, the way I would do it is actually put something more protective on the actual network rather than on the single PC unit anyway. Um, but yeah, all those things will affect your PC. Um, you don't need to delete, you know, when people say, oh, you must format every three months or every six months or something. No, that's just lazy ways to do it. This, the software will clean up most of this stuff that Windows isn't doing. Um, I mean, it's a bit like photos. If we take photos, the Mac is very good at reading photos because it reads them differently. Um, there's a lot of Linux runs better on certain things. Mac runs certain things better. Uh, Windows has its place, but it isn't very good with file management. Um, not when it comes to your home computer anyway. And... I know with the Mac, they had a similar issue um, a few years back where they did an update and the update didn't actually do anything new. What it was is they went away and cleared up lines of code in their operating system. 
um, they spent a year making it cleaner. I don't think Microsoft do that because <laughs> every version of Windows I've ever had has steadily grown. It's never decreased. So these are the reasons why it gets slower and slower. But you don't have to format it, clean up your registry, um, go through. I'll show you how to defrag a drive and do all the bits and pieces to help your computer run faster um, on the upcoming videos. And I hope you find everything useful. And I hope you found this video useful explaining why your PC is getting slower. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah.